What's good everybody? Welcome to another video. First of all, thanks for watching. Thanks for coming back if you've been here before. And today we're gonna talk about something that's very exciting to me and that's TikTok. The way I think about TikTok is there's way more people watching than there are people supplying the content. So it's pretty easy comparatively to break through on that platform. So about two weeks ago, I posted this video. And it kind of went a little viral. Now it's not like in the millions on anything like views and likes. But for me at the time I had like 300 subscribers and now it has around 200,000 views, you know, 40K likes, which is kind of crazy to me. TikTok, if you're not on it yet, really go do it. It's worth your time. Now on the video, it's very much just phone on a computer screen kind of showing you what's going on. So I want to take this opportunity to go a lot deeper into it and show you exactly what I did here uh, in my Studio One session. Okay, so now here we are. You can see there's all the tracks and the actual music is right over here. But what I wanna show you first is how in this program at least you can import your media. So right here I have the video I wanna use. I switch over to Studio One and literally just drop it in there. Now the video comes up here and what you have to do next is extract your audio from your video. This is very easy right here. You go to, you wanna extract the audio to a new track? Yes. I'm not gonna do that right now because I already did it and the arrangement is finished, but that's the first step. Then second, what I did is I tempo tracked the recording. Shut your mouth, baby, stand and now basically just went through the whole track and uh, kind of tried to figure out um, how well she keeps tempo, where it kind of speeds up, where it gets a little slower. And that's why over here on the tempo automation, you can see those jumps in tempo. I really just go through it, see where the click matches up with the track, and if not, kind of like play around with the tempo. After you do this a couple of times, you kind of figure out if there's a longer break in the vocal, for example, most people tend to speed up that break, so you probably have to do something about that, but really just trial and error, go through it, take your time and really get it right. I think with these, it's very important to kind of have an idea in your head of what you want the finished product to sound like. And in this case, I started with the drums because that was kind of the most important to me from the beginning. First up, we have the direct kick drum microphone. Now looking back, I would have done it a little bit differently, but hey, that's how it turned out and people liked it, so that's fine. Secondly, we have the room sound of the kick drum. Now you can hear there's a lot more room and side information going on rather than just a mono signal. If we put those two sounds together, that's pretty much the kick drum sound right there. Kind of got a little bit of a longer decay. I wouldn't use it for like a metal song or something, but for this, I think I sounded pretty cool. Next up, snares. So what I did here is pretty common for all kinds of um, pop and modern arrangements and that's sample stacking. So most of the time when you hear a pop song or even like metal songs these days that are heavily sampled, you don't just hear one snare sound or one kick sound, but there's a lot of layers to them and then they just get summed together. So I'm just gonna play the song and then switch on some of the samples that I stacked for the snare. Just like I did with the kick drum, here we have um, two of these clap samples really spread apart with a delay. It's a common technique. It would go a little bit too deep for our purposes here, but there's a ton of tutorials out there that will tell you how you can spread samples by using delays. So far, that's what we have. Next up, something kind of different in this case, it's shells instead of closed hi-hats. 
Now, usually a drummer wouldn't play it with shells, of course. It would play it on the closed hi-hat, but for me, for this case, I just thought it was a little bit different and it sounded kind of cool. We still do have hi-hats in this song, though. They're open. Kind of sounds a little bit like a halftime breakdown in a metal song or something. Just adds a little bit of that sizzling noise of an open hi-hat in the background. Next thing we're gonna look at is the bass sound. Now what I did here with the bass is split it up onto two tracks. And that is because I can do different kind of processing on each of the tracks as you can see here. Now that doesn't sound thick, then I don't know what does. But how do I get it to be so thick? Well, the answer is really saturation. That's all it is if you hear those like thick kick drum samples or 808s. Most of the time they're just really saturated. And that's exactly what I did here. So let's listen to the bass without any kind of processing. Not that thick, I would say. So first we have two amp simulations. So that makes the sound a little more compact. It doesn't really distort it that much or saturate it that much, but it makes it a little more compressed. Then we bring out the big guns here with this M saturator. This is a fantastic plugin, guys. Now it's a free pack by Melda Productions. I still use it in every single one of my songs. And especially this one is fantastic. You pretty much just crank up the gain. Don't have to do it this much, but that's the effect I wanted and that's what it sounds like. And that's pretty much the bass sound. Then we also have a synth because why not? It gives it a little bit of those vibes. Those vibes. Analog dreams, native instruments, great sounding synth. And lastly, my favorite part, guitar. Now the guitar work on here is nothing spectacular, just a bunch of power chords, but I think it works with the song and it doesn't need more. What's the best thing for the song is really the most important question. And if I just started shredding around, I think it wouldn't add anything to it. So I kept it pretty simple. Power chords, always on the root note of the bass guitar, and that's pretty much it. So for all of y'all guitar players out there, just really quickly, what it is, is an A. Then we go down to the G. C. And back to the G. Like I said, nothing spectacular about it. Also notice how it didn't say minor or major, that's because it's just power chords. And if I played the whole chord, I think it would do too much in this case. So power chords, perfectly fine. Don't be afraid to go simple. Works in this case, so why not? Then we have some guitar fills in here where I just play around with the chords up higher on the neck so to separate the different guitar parts. And last but not least, we have some U2 The Edge style guitar playing. Just some single notes, tremolo playing on the right hand, higher up on the neck to give it a little more space, you know, that kind of spacey sound. It's pushed way to the back with the reverb because that kind of guitar part, I don't want to just hear in your face all the time. That's supposed to be a little bit in the background, just kind of give it that flavor. And now all the guitar parts together. So 
So you can really hear the power chords are what you hear first, what you hear best and everything else is just kind of adds a little bit to the flavor. So then we have some vocal doubles. It would be a lot cooler to get the singer in here and kind of do doubles, but that's not what you can do in this case. So I just kind of copied the original track and did some processing with it. The stand and deliver, that's what I wanted to emphasize, so that's what I cut out. So I wanted those specific vocal parts to be a lot wider and the way I achieve that is with a delay. It's a very, very short delay, but it's spread apart between the left and the right side and that's how you get that effect. Then we also have some octave doubles. Very popular technique, usually it's just sung an octave lower. Here I had to pitch it. <laughs> By itself, it sounds pretty unnatural, I will admit in this case, but if you blend it in with the original vocal just a little bit underneath it, I think it sounds great. So let's listen to all the vocal parts together. So after the production, I went into mixing it a little bit. There's not too much going on. There's some effects like reverbs and delays. Please let me know if you're interested in that kind of stuff too. If you want to kind of see what I did on the mixing side of things, this was focused more on the production side of this song. And that is the tale of how I went viral on TikTok. Please don't think because you're not a teenage girl that you can't do anything on TikTok on this fantastic platform that is emerging in front of our eyes. Nope, none of my other stuff has done quite as well as this, not even close, but you gotta keep on putting out stuff and see how people react to it. So what do you think about TikTok after seeing this video? Still think it's only for teenagers? Let me know down in the comments. Would really love to hear your thoughts about it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.